नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पॉलनोमेल रिग्रेशन बिफोर गेटिंग इन टू द डिटेल्स लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई डू वी नीड पॉलनोमेल रिग्रेशन लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल वेर द इनपुट फीचर एक्स वन एंड द आउटपुट लेबल वाई आर रिलेटेड टू इच अदर थ्रू द साइन फंक्शन and for such a such a training set if we use a line to to learn the mapping between the input and output such a line is going to be very inadequate in order to learn the mapping you can see that visually that the line is hardly able to learn the correct mapping between the input feature and the output label and you can see that there are large error at each point because of this line as a function so in general there are many times the relationship between the input feature and output label is non linear and a simple linear model is not adequate to learn such mappings let's look at the key idea behind polynomial regression the key idea here is to create polynomial features by combining the existing input features and once we create these polynomial features we apply the linear regression model that we learned in our earlier parts of the videos on this polynomial feature representation let's try to compare the linear regression model and the polynomial regression model what you see in the top line is the flow workflow of the linear regression model it takes features as input and it produces the output label which is a real number in case of polynomial regression there is an additional step which is shown in the green box that particular step what it does is it takes the input features and learns and transforms it using the polynomial transform and then applies linear regression model on it to obtain the output phi k of features is called polynomial transformation of kth order so on this sample data set where the input and the output is related by sin function a simple linear regression model without polynomial transformation with the form y is equal to w0 plus w1x is inadequate you can see that the model denoted by the red line which is a linear model is not a great fit and we need to search for a better model in this case we are able to visualize the model fitment visually since we are dealing with data in one dimensional feature space we simply have a single variable as a input we have a single feature and um, and a label which is a real number and because we are dealing with a single feature data we are able to visualize the model and diagnose the fitment but as the number of features grows clearly in real life example it won't be possible for us to visualize the fitment in this manner in such a case we rely on learning curves and we have also discussed this during linear regression we rely on learning curves to determine the quality of the fitment when the there are two situations when the model is underfitting both training and validation losses are high on the other hand when the model is overfitting training and validation losses decrease initially and then the validation loss increases while the training loss keeps decreasing further in case of the example data or the sample data we have the following learning curves which are shown on the right hand side you can see that both training and validation losses are high and that means the model is underfitting in this case there is some strange thing that you will observe or an unusual thing that the, that the validation loss is less than the training loss and this is happening because uh, we have a very small amount of validation data this usually is not observed in practice when you are dealing with a very large amount of data sets 
So how do we fix underfitting is the question. We can fix underfitting by increasing the capacity of the model to learn nonlinear relationship between the features and the labels. One way to increase the capacity is by, by taking polynomial transformations. The polynomial transformation construct new features from the existing features. So for the training data with single feature x1, we first use kth order polynomial transformation to create features like x squared, x cube all the way up to x raised to k because we are using kth order polynomial transformation. And once we transform the input feature with the kth order polynomial transformation, we use linear regression model to learn relationship between the input features and the output label. Now since input is already transformed, we have the transformed feature sets as input to linear regression model and we try to decipher or learn the relationship between these transformed, uh, transformed features and the label. After performing the kth order polynomial transformation of the input feature, we have a model that computes the label y as a linear combination of the, uh, the kth order polynomial features that is w0 plus w1x1 plus w2x1 squared all the way up to wk x1 raised to k. You can see that we have, uh, we have new terms that were added through polynomial transformation. For example, we have x1 squared term over here and then we will have x1 cube all the way up to x1 raised to k. And for the first term, we add uh, a dummy feature which is uh, x1 raised to 0 which is equal, equal to 1 in order to get um, a uniform representation uh, for the multiples of the weights. And because of this particular arrangement, we are able to write y, the label, as sum over i equal to 0 to k wi x1 raised to i. So this is the kth order polynomial and the label y is obtained as a linear combination of kth order polynomial terms. Note that the model is nonlinear function of x but is a linear function of weight vector. Let's represent this transformation in form of a vector phi with k components. Each component denotes a specific transformation to be applied to the input feature. We can represent the polynomial regression model through this particular transformation vector as y is equal to sum over, uh, sum over all terms in the polynomial transform and we multiply each term with the corresponding weight. So wi in general the ith trans so ith transformation will be multiplied by the weight wi. So we can compactly represent this in a vector form as y is equal to w transpose phi of x and this x remember is a feature vector. It's a small case bold face letter so this is a feature vector. Let's look at some examples of polynomial transformation. For a single feature x1, phi k will give the kth power of that particular feature. So phi k of x1 will be x1 raised to k. When you have two features x1 and x2, the phi 2 of x1 and x2 which is the, which is the second order transformation, we essentially get terms like uh, 1 which is a 0th order transformation, then the original uh, features as they are which is x1 and x2 and then we will apply the second order transformation to get terms like x1 squared, x2 squared and then the combination of x1, x2. If we have two features and if you are applying phi 3 on these two features, we will be getting 
the third order terms, the third order polynomial terms. You can see that the new terms that are added which are third order polynomial terms are x1 cube, x2 cube, x1, x2 squared and x1 squared, x2. You can see that all the terms that are present in phi 2 are also present in phi 3. So in general, the transformation phi k would incorporate all the, all the polynomials from the transformation phi k minus j where j is uh, greater than or equal to 1. Or in plain English, we can say that a transformation of a given order of a given polynomial order will contain terms from all the lower polynomials in, in it, so which you can see over here. The polynomial transformation is implemented uh, using, uh, using this particular function which we will study in detail when we look at the polynomial regression collab. Now what we will do is instead of just fixing the polynomial uh, order, we will try different polynomial models of different orders let us say from k equal to 0 to 9 on this particular small sample data set. And remember in this data set the relationship between the input and output is given by sine 2 pi x function. So there is a single feature which is x1 on the x axis and the label y is on the y axis. And when we applied uh, polynomial models of different orders, so the m over here denotes the order of the polynomial. So this is a 0th order polynomial model. This is a first order polynomial model which is a linear model and then we have higher order polynomial models that are shown um, in, in the remaining uh, plots. So you can see that the lower order polynomial models clearly underpits the data. The third order polynomial model seems to have a reasonable fit to the data. It does not overfit all the model, uh, it does not overfit all the points, but it has got in general the lower error rate. So the model passes uh, very close to the actual uh, points. And the higher order polynomial models, let us say with uh, polynomial degree greater than or equal to 7, they seem to be overfitting. The classic overfitting case is can be seen with the model of a uh, uh, model containing ninth order polynomials. You can see that it literally connects each of the point. So it is able to you know produce a perfect result on the training set, but it will generalize very poorly on the unseen data. So in order to diagnose models through learning curves when we are training multiple such kind of models of different orders, let us look at that procedure. We first train polynomial models of different orders and then we calculate training and validation root mean square error and then we plot, plot a graph of degree versus RMSE. So here is an example plot from our sample data and the models that we train on that data. So we have degree on the x axis and root mean squared error on the y axis. We have two kinds of lines here. One is the training RMSC and the validation RMSC. So we can see that the training and validation RMSC are initially decreasing as we increase the degree. After a point, the training RMSC keeps decreasing further whereas the validation RMSC starts going up. It rises sharply around degree 7 and this could well be the sign of overfitting. So we can say that the models uh, overfit 
they, they very badly overfit in fact beyond let's say degree 6. So, we can also see that training and validation errors are close by uh, until certain degree, degree 4 they are pretty close by but beyond that point they diverge and you can see that beyond that point training error further reduces but the validation error keeps increasing. And we also observe that RMSC increases sharply for, for all the degrees greater than 7, greater than or equal to 7. And as we discussed earlier, this is, uh, this is a classical signature of overfitting. So uh, what are the issues with polynomial model? And probably this overfitting is one of the, one of the issues, especially when we uh, try to train higher order polynomial models. They are very flexible. In other words, they have higher capacity compared to lower order, order polynomial models. So because there are enough weight vectors, so there are enough number of weights in the weight vector, you know, uh, you know, model has uh, more flexibility or it has got higher capacity and because of which it is able to model the nonlinear relationship between the input and the output. And because of this uh, flexibility or higher capacity, polynomial regression models are prone to overfitting compared to the lower degree polynomial models. What happens in overfitting? You know, we get perfect fit to the training data, we get zero training error, but we get a very poor prediction accuracy on the validation data set. So let's look at what happens in case of overfitting. Uh, and here we demonstrate it with a polynomial model of degree 9 or polynomial model of order 9. So we alternatively use this word order and degree. So we have, we have a model which predicts the label as a linear combination of, uh, of the values of various degrees of the polynomial and here we use uh, you know 9 degree or 9th order polynomial model. And we have seen this particular model where uh, this model literally uh, connects uh, different training examples and uh, it, is, um, it is highly flexible. And because of uh, these peculiar characteristics, the way it is able to connect training points uh, through piecewise uh, linear patches is by using arbitrary large weights on the higher order terms. You can see that these are the weights, these are the values of the weight. Look at the value of the weight for W0 is just 1.76, but somewhere uh, over here for W8 it is a very large value which is 298k. And because of these large values, the model is, um, model is overfitting and it is able to, you know, obtain uh, zero training error. You can see uh, the similar pattern with degree 7 model. Of course, the amount of overfitting is not that severe as degree 9 models and the weight values are also not that high as degree 9 model. But you know still the weight values there is a very large variation in the weight values and uh, this could also point to uh, the overfitting. So how do we address overfitting? That is the problem. And there are two ways. One is either using larger training set or controlling the model complexity through regularization. And the regularization concept allows us to fit complex models on relatively smaller data sets without overfitting. 